Hello and welcome to Isan Flicks. Today, while out walking with the dogs, I thought I would talk to you about the ever-changing face of Earth and its environment. The surface of Earth is always changing, as is the atmosphere above and around the Earth. However, we do not notice or see many of these natural changes because they take place very slowly over millions of years. Well, they used to. Nevertheless, many of the human-made changes to the environment are easier to see. I could go on and explain natural forces and other slow changes to Earth. But today, I will try and concentrate on the humankind, if I'm allowed to say that. That's man, women and children's impact that Earth and the whole world has seen and is now currently experiencing. Let me start, say, some 10,000 years back, for an example, when most people lived in small groups. Their ways of life were adjusted to suit the natural environment. Over time, these people settled where there were fertile soils and, of course, water, mainly alongside river valleys, for example. These people then learned to use animals, water and fuels for energy. They went on to build houses, create fields, and then water canals or channels which went on and changed the landscape. These people, or should say our ability to change the landscape, has increased rapidly as our population continues to grow. All these changes made to the landscapes were to improve our living standards and now new knowledge has helped us grow more food for the Earth's billions of people. Through all this, our life expectancy has increased. People are living longer. However, back in time, as populations increased, small villages turned into suburbs, suburbs into towns, towns into cities, and today's cities are turning into mega cities. Today, most people live in towns and cities and are not aware of the changing countryside. That is good, right? However, there is always a price to be paid for everything, including improvements to our standards of living, lifestyle and life expectancy. Over time, our environment has suffered. Natural habitats and resources, such as clean water, of course, has suffered. Today, factories are busy producing the food products, clothes, vehicles and everything else today's population requires or needs to live a good lifestyle. Yet, many of these factories release or used to release harmful wastes into the water or into the air. Of course, polluting the air we breathe or the water we drink plus all the other organisms living in our rivers and streams. And of course, farming has greatly changed the landscape, and most of us know how water or lack of it can affect all farming patterns, such as crops failing and livestock die dying, which led to an in increase in methods of irrigation, insecticides and fertilizers, which then increase the cost of food. No big deal if one has the money to pay. All these changes over time have led us to environmental degradation, unprecedented global threats such as climate change and decrease in biodiversity have been building and will become more severe as populations, economies and consumption grow. All this growth will lead to crucial local environmental problems, including shortages of fresh water and arable land, then there's the mountain waste, and 
air, water and soil pollution, which of course adversely affects health and threatens the expansion of food production required to feed more people a better diet. All this will, in my opinion, then lead to uh, economic stagnation. As in poorer societies, populations often double in size in two or three decades. Therefore, industries, offices, housing, schools, health clinics and the infrastructure must be built at at least the same rate. Of course, many communities will be unable to keep up. As today it is evident from high unemployment rates, explosive growth of slum populations, overcrowded schools and health facilities, dilapidated public infrastructures such as the roads, the sewage systems, the electrical power grids, water and the list goes on. Furthermore, in the rapidly growing regions about half of the population is aged under 20. This low ratio of workers to dependents depresses living standards and makes it more difficult to invest in the physical and human capital needed. The size of the formal labour force is also limited when women remain at home to care for large families. Then of course this brings on a risk of high maternal mortality rates. High birth rates mean frequent childbearing. Each pregnancy is associated with a risk of death or disability. And this is highest in countries with a weak health care system. For example, in the poorest countries of West Africa, a woman's risk of dying in childbirth before the end of her reproductive years is about 1 in 20. Then in my opinion, all of the above, or what I have just mentioned, will lead to and create political unrest. I say that as youth unemployment will become more widespread as poorer economies are unable to provide them with jobs. There will be vigorous competition for the few jobs which will then lead to low wages which in turn contribute to poverty. Then the large numbers of unemployed and frustrated young men in particular will fuel social economic tensions. There will be high crime rates and then political instability which will lead to well you can answer that question yourself I should keep my own opinions to myself to avoid giving anyone the chance of being offended so do you get the picture do you see what I see well I see overpopulation for starters However, the people are, are now here, so what else can we do to face this apparent climate change, global warming, whatever you want to call it or like to call it? It doesn't matter what you call it, it is now an established fact, so what can we do about it? Firstly, in my opinion, I think all the Earth's countries, governments need to address the impact of population growth. It is my belief and that of many scientists that a couple producing more than two children will impact carbon emissions to a greater degree than any other activity which cannot be offset, offset by any practical lifestyle change or switching to vegetarianism. In order for us mere people to better understand how damaging some human activities are for the environment, the terms like carbon emissions and carbon footprint are bantered about by scientists and governments. Also there is the term CO2 emissions, carbon dioxide emissions, which is the primary driver of 
global climate change and has to be reduced and by a lot and fairly soon. I believe climate change is certainly a growing concern for most people. However, it is not too late for us to act on it as long as we act now, like today, but not next year or wait for another COP summit. So what actually causes CO2 emissions and leaves a carbon footprint and how can we reduce them? So whenever you drive a car, buy a pair of shoes, grill a steak, cook a meal, you contribute to the emission of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. That is your carbon footprint. So how can you reduce your carbon footprint? Making small changes to your lifestyle can make a big difference in the long run. For example, when it comes to transportation, food, clothing, waste, etc. Let's start with food. Try and consume local and seasonal products. Limit meat consumption, especially beef. Select fish from sustainable fishing. And then bring reusable shopping bags and avoid products with excessive plastic packaging. And make sure you only buy what you need to avoid additional waste. For clothing, take good care of your clothes. Try swapping, borrowing, renting or buying second-hand clothes. Buy responsibly made clothes, you know, made from recycled material or with an echo label. And when it comes to transport, think about using public transport or cycling to work or be smart about when and how you drive and think about taking a train for your next holiday instead of flying abroad. Think about reducing your energy uses and, and waste like turning down the heating by one degree, take shorter showers, turn off the water when you brush your teeth or clean the dishes unplug your electronic equipment and don't leave your phone on charge when the battery is already full and then of course limit and recycle your waste whenever possible well these are just a few things you could do but I'm the first to say that some may not be practical for all but every little change can make a difference I'm not sure if this video will be helpful, but um, a little less makes a lot of difference. We can bring birth rates down, we can empower women and girls, we can remove barriers to, to co contraception, we can provide quality education for all, and global justice and sustainable economies. And we can exercise our choice. These are just a few things you could do, but I am the first to say that some may not be practical for all, but every little change can make a difference. I am no eco-warrior. I'm just someone that doesn't want to damage the environment. I would like to think what we have today my grandchildren's grandchildren will also have it in their lifetime. I think I have rambled on enough for today. I do have more opinions on how we can cut our CO2 emissions to protect our environments and perhaps I will share them with you in another video. If you did like this video, think about giving me a thumbs up share the video leave me a comment but better still subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my other videos i hope this video has made you think about how you can protect your own environment and help improve our earth's climate 
After all, it's the only one we have, and therefore we should protect it. So until my next video, it's a very goodbye from me.